Okay guys, let's do one more video for our discrete random variables and this one is going to be about our Poisson distribution. So let's kind of label that real quick that we're dealing with Poisson. And remember for the Poisson distribution we need one piece of information. We need lambda and that is our rate of success. This would be our rate of success and that's the only piece of information that we need because lambda equals the rate of success uh, but the lambda also equals our mu or our u our average and it also equals the variance or sigma squared like so Poisson is a little strange um, but we only need a very limited amount of information in order to do this okay so once again as with all of our discrete random variables, we have our support, we have our probability mass function, and we have our cumulative distribution function. Uh, there we go. And let me put in there, this is the PMF, and this is the CDF. Okay, so we have our scenario. Danica is out riding with her friends on a new mountain bike trail. Uh, she knows that on average she will fall off her bike three times for every 14 miles of trail ridden. They planned a 20 mile ride. And then we've got these following questions. So it's the probability that you will fall between four and seven times on the ride. And anyways, the rest of these. Okay, and we'll get to them in just a second. The first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to build our, uh, our probability mass function. So we're going to do it two different ways. Uh, one way I just want to show you with Excel how you can do it and then how we can do it more easily with our commander. Okay, so one interesting thing about the Poisson distribution is that the support goes from zero to infinity. There's like, there's no, um, there's no end to it. Like, is it, is it possible that Danica will fall a thousand times on this ride? Yeah, I guess it's possible, but it's probably unlikely. So really what we need to do is we need to look at a certain range within our Poisson distribution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I know that that Danica, that on average, she falls between, you know, she falls three times. And my questions are asking like maximum of if she's going to fall seven times. So I'm just going to run this down to 10. You could go more, you could go a few less, but this one will work. Now for the Poisson, the probability mass function is kind of strange. It equals, so it equals E raised to the power of negative lambda. And then we multiply that by lambda uh, raised to the power of X or of our support and then so that's in our numerator we divide by then n factorial so it, it's kind of an ugly equation uh, but we can uh, we can do it in Excel no problem so it says equals to get that e it's just exp and when we put a parenthesis it says okay exp and then once our number we can do negative lambda and here we have to find lambda and when we look at our, our problem we're like oh wait our lambda is kind of weird so let's work on that first so when we let's go ahead and put lambda off to the side lambda okay so lambda is our rate that we are interested in now it gave us one rate it gave us three times for every 14 miles 14 and we'll say so like three falls four every 14 miles but our question is is we can put it like a little question mark here question mark number of falls falls for 20 miles all right and so our lambda is going to be what this question mark is our rate of success for a given um for a given set of miles we need these two uh, probabilities uh, to be the same. So this 3 divided by 14 needs to be the same as this x divided by 20, or this lambda divided by 20. 
All right, so if you remember from you know way back when, um, let's see if I can't. I'll I'll write it in here in this text box. Okay, so we have three divided by fourteen, and that's going to be equal to our like lambda lambda divided by twenty. So if we want to get our our lambda by itself, we, it would be lambda equals three times twenty divided by fourteen, and that should give us our lambda. So let's give it a shot. So this is going to be equal to three times, or we'll do three divided by fourteen. Multiple, uh, we'll do it the same way that I have it written. Three times 20 divided by 14. And this gives us this value, this four point. It's kind of ugly, um, but it'll it'll work for, uh, for our purposes. Okay, so we've got this. And let's see if it's the same uh, ratio. So this is going to be three divided by 14. That's that big nasty number, and then this is going to be equal to what we just calculated divided by 20, and it should be the same. And check it out, it's the same proportion, so now we've got our lambda value, and we can move on. All right, so now we can say equals exp negative lambda, so we've got our lambda now, we're going to lock that in place because it doesn't change, and then we're going to multiply by lambda, lock that one in place, raised to the power of x, which is our support. So we're going to come over and click on our support. And then just for good measure, I'm going to put this entire thing in parentheses to just show to me that it's in the numerator. You actually don't need it, uh, but it helps me out. And then I'm going to do factorial of the uh, support. Divide it by the factorial of the support. I hit enter, and I drag it all the way down. Now we can double check to see if I did it right. Equals the sum of all of these guys. Oh, wait. So that actually doesn't work this time. And the reason why that doesn't work is because our uh, PMF goes on for forever. So if we wanted to sum it up, we'd have to go from like zero to infinity. So we'll leave that alone for right now. And we'll double check it with our, um, with our R commander code. And then for here, we're just gonna say equals the sum of this value colon that b2 we're going to lock this first one and then we're just going to drag it down and that will let us know the probability of a specific event happening or less okay so before we go on i want to show how we can get this pmf instead of going through this nasty trial of like trying to get out this equation and dragging it down that works uh, but we can also get it easily from our commander. So if we go into R and we type in uh, our, well, I think I've got my R commander running already. Yeah, I do. So get your R commander running. Then we're going to go to distributions. We're still in discrete. This time we're going to go to Poisson distribution and we're going to go down to Poisson probabilities. And note that it only asks for one piece of information. And we got that. It's not going to be perfect because it's like a kind of nasty repeating decimal, but it will be close enough for what we're doing. Because remember, most of what I ask for you to um, to give me for answers is like four or five decimal places, and most of the time that's enough. So we're going to do four points, and here we go: two, eight, five, seven, one, four, uh, two, nine. All right, let, let me make sure that I got that right. 4.28571429. Okay, and now we can just click OK. And then check this out. So it gives us this probability. Now, sometimes it doesn't give us the exact range that we want. We can actually fix that. So let's say if we wanted to go instead from like 10 to 23. That's all that we were interested in, 10 to 23. I could highlight this and say submit and now it gives me my uh, probability mass function for this Poisson distribution from 10 to 23. 
All right, but it actually gave me what I wanted, so I'm just going to copy this and then come over and I'm going to paste it right in here. I'm going to paste and hey, check that out. Sometimes it's handy and it'll actually do it correctly for you. Uh, I'm going to just delete out this column. I don't need it. Delete that. And then I'm going to highlight my CDF. One cool thing that you can do is if you grab the edge, you can just drag it over to someplace else. I want to delete out this column and I just want to compare my values and it looks like yeah for all intents and purposes my uh, my probabilities are the same let's get these under control because they have way too many decimals and let's just show four or five I'm going to just show four and as we can see that I was able to easily get that PMF I want to delete these guys don't need them four uh, for this Poisson situation by using R Commander. So if you want to use Excel, fine. R Commander is faster. Use R Commander. Okay, so now we've got some questions to ask, right? So we've got first one. What's the probability that you will fall between four and seven times on this ride? Let's let's include in there inclusive to know that we also want that four and that seven. All right, so here we go. So if I want this probability of 4 less than or equal to our discrete random variable less than or equal to 7. And I'll just say this would be the sum from 4 to 7 on that PMF and hit enter. And there's like a 55% chance that she's going to fall between 4 to 7 times on this 20 mile ride. Okay, cool. Next one, what's the probability that you will fall off more than five times? All right, so this is the probability that the discrete random variable will, equal, will be greater than five. Okay, so this one is a little tricky because normally I just say, okay, greater than five, so I'd uh, like add from six on down. But the problem is, is that, well, I don't know what 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way down to like infinity. And anyways, it's a little difficult. So what you can do is you can use our concept oops, of, of complements. So this probability, it's going to be the same thing as saying 1 minus, remember, complements of the probability of the discrete random variable being less than or equal to 5. So here I'm saying we're going to take the probabilities of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I know that those are not included because they want to know what's greater than 5 or 6 and greater. So if I do 1 minus, that will give me the probability because the PMF always adds up to 1. Even though the Poisson goes on for forever, I know that, that, the, that the sum of all of those is going to add up to 1, which then gives me this guy, which now I can do. This one's actually pretty easy. I can say equals to 1 minus the probability uh, now I can use the CDF. I can just go down to the number 5 because this is the probability of the discrete random variable being less than or equal to 5, which is what I have down here. I could enter. And there is a 26% chance that she's going to fall more than 5 times. Okay, next one. We've got what is the probability that she is going to fall off less than 2 times. Okay, so probability of the discrete random variable is going to be less than 2. Okay, which is the same thing as saying the probability of x being less than or equal to 1. Okay, and we can just pick that one out. That one's going to equal less than or equal to 1. There's, a, there's about a 7% chance that she's going to fall off less than 2 times. Okay, so the expected value of x is just equal to mu and we know what that is mu up here we know is equal to lambda so we can say that that's just going to be equal to that guy let's get it under control oops wrong way that you know it's like 4.3 times is how many she expects to fall off and then the standard deviation the standard deviation of our discrete random variable here is just going to be equal to okay remember Poisson is weird because the lambda equals mu, this guy, which also equals the variance. And if we want the standard deviation, we just take the square root of the expected value. And we hit enter. Let's get those decimals down. And the standard deviation is about 2.07 falls. 
And I think that we got everything between four and seven inclusive. We have greater than five, less than two, her expected falls, and her standard deviation. So I hope that helps you out on your Poisson uh, discrete random variables.